Um, I'm here with King Tan. He's one of the tax professionals we have here in Argyle Private by Rockwell Olivia. And we're here to just have a brief discussion on the benefit of private and binding ruling system. Hi, King. Hi, Peter. We're here to talk about private binding rulings. Yes. What are they? Private binding rulings. They are essentially um, a confirmation requested by the taxpayer of the Commission of Taxation on a, a question of tax law. Um, it could be something as simple as um, the current residence that I have. Uh, is it the main residence for capital gains tax purposes? And if it is, that means that when I dispose of it, and as an individual taxpayer, it's free of capital gains tax. So individuals, taxpayers that is, yes. can apply for a private binding ruling yes. as well as major corporate, yep. as well national, as international, as trustees, uh, partners for partnership. How do you go about applying for a private binding ruling? Um, well, first of all, you have to talk to a tax accountant or tax lawyer to just think about how you should structure the private binding ruling because it is actually an important business tool that most people do not realize that it is an important business tool not just from a tax perspective but it should form as part of um, an expansion of your business or just um, of your circumstances. So what, what you're suggesting is mm -hmm. by getting that ruling yes. you gain some certainty around what planning yes. you might be able to then employ. Yes, um, it is predominantly used for tax but you could also get certainty on your proposals. For example, if you propose to expand your business into a certain area to introduce a new product, it's good to get that certainty from the commissioner before you go ahead and implement the whole expansion. So, so the area you're referring to there yeah. is one of the matters you've worked on where we had a client yes. who had, um, a, where the business started from before mm -hmm. 1985. It was, yes. it was exempt from capital gains tax, yes. wasn't it? Yes. And so what you're referring to there is how can they expand their business and it's still to be exempt from capital gains tax? Yes, yes. So the question that the, the client uh, would have asked in that instance would include, number one, um, whether their interest in that business was indeed um, pre-1985 and if it is, that means that if they sell the interest now, it should be exempt from capital gains tax. And secondly, and this is where the, the business planning opportunities comes in, uh, what will happen to that status, the status of the interest, should they decide to uh, expand the products in a certain way or to structure it in a certain way. And the Commissioner of Taxation will answer it and based on that answer, the taxpayer will be able to get some certainty on what to do and what not to do. So in that sense, it can be a really valuable um, business planning tool. Yes. What's the real value for a taxpayer if they do get a private binding ruling? Um, the real value for the taxpayer if they do get a private binding ruling is number one, it's a confirmation from the Commissioner of Taxation on that question that they've asked. Mm. And number two, that response from the Commissioner is binding on the Commissioner for a number of tax years generally it's five years um, and during those five years if the court uh, interprets that what the commissioner has decided based on that ruling is wrong uh, and the taxpayer will be paying more tax because the commissioner's decision is wrong the commissioner is I guess uh, bound by that private binding ruling and they can't come back to the taxpayer and say you should be paying more tax so that's the real value for the taxpayer. Yeah, that, that's right, isn't it? Not, not, not a lot of people necessarily understand that. Yes. The actual tax legislation says the amount of tax liable, mm -hmm. had the ruling been correct, is what you capped at. Yes. Right? You actually are limited the amount of tax, even if it's later found to be wrong. Yes. Um, binding rulings, um, limited only to income tax or capital gains tax matters? No, um, you can get it in a stamp duty context. It won't be from the Commission of Taxation and the Australian Taxation Office. You'll be getting the ruling from the Office of State Revenue, which is state-based. Um, and it's also been expanded into a superannuation context. So, private and binding rulings, it's a tool to be used. It's in fact actually an important business tool. Um, you should really be thinking about introducing that to clients a little bit earlier in their planning so that they can give greater certainty. This is certainly the experience that King has brought yes. whenever he's been involved in looking after 
obtaining private money rulings for clients, not only in income tax, capital gains tax matters, but stamp duty. That's an important area to be alive to because it's been quite a shock to find having a stamp duty liability for a transaction not otherwise intended. Thanks very much, King. Thank you.